Hello everybody, this is Blex here bringing you a guide on the developer's environments that you can access after downloading the Anaconda package. So in my prior video, we went ahead and installed Anaconda. We can uh, go and test that here. And if you wanted to write some code, you would pop up the Anaconda prompt. You can type in Python. You can see Python 3.7 is accessible. We can do a print hello world and we can write our code in here. So x equals one, x plus x equals two. That's great, that's fine. But developer environments allow you to more um, easily access, store, and execute your code for future reference or just testing in general. So let's pop open another Anaconda prompt and let's type in Jupyter Notebook. So what this is, is my preferred IDE or development environment for Python. This comes naturally available after downloading Anaconda. In your Anaconda prompt, if you type Jupyter Notebook, you should have access. Please leave a comment if you don't, I'll look into it. We can come in here and it's going to give you a directory of files that you can access based on where your installation occurred. And from here, you can go and create a new folder. So for this example, we'll create a new Python video projects. We can create a new Python notebook. So our notebook is where all of our code is stored and executed. And it's run on a line by line basis. So let's do a quick import pandas as PD. We'll get into pandas at a later date, but for now, let's just see if it runs. And it does, and we can do a print hello world, and that works as well. So this is great. This is it looks visually appealing. You can see the um, the strings are kept in a different color as the other statements from Python. We can uh, continue writing code as we please in these below statements, and continue to import code in on a line by line basis. Now, if we wanted to save this, we can go to File, Save, or Make a Copy, and this will make a static version of it but it's a live saving environment. Now, if you want to rename it, just go up top, click the name, rename the name to whatever you want, Python video in this case. Now, if you wanted to switch some of the cells around, let's take a look at some of these buttons. We can move the cells that we have actively selected with these arrow keys, and this is useful for prototyping code at the bottom of your code, and then maybe shifting it up and into the belly of your, of your coding environment, depending on what you're working on. Um, we can also cut, copy, and paste all of our different cells here so same idea if we wanted to move stuff around we can easily cut copy and paste and move things to wherever in this development notebook and we can keep replicating things from there now the last thing i want to touch on is the kernels so we can interrupt kernels and restart kernels that's the two main things i want to talk about now interrupting a kernel what that does is it stops the active process so let's say we're training a neural network and it's taking too long and we just want to interrupt it we can go ahead and click the interrupt button, and from there, we'll see we get the kernel interrupted status within the prompt. And then from there, if you wanted to restart it, restarting completely resets the environment. So it takes all the variables that we had, and it wipes everything saved. And we can go and verify that with our prompt. So you can see here, kernel restarted. And we can continue using that notebook from, um, from where we left off, but it's nothing is saved. So we have to reload the packages and reload the variables. Now, I also want to touch on the Visual Studio code that we downloaded with the Anaconda package real quick, just to give you an alternative. So let's get into that. So this is Visual Studio code. We have a fairly bland, but kind of nice environment to work in. And it's got a uh, few different areas I want to highlight. So we have the Explore tab, we have the search tab, we have the source control, we have debug, and then lastly extensions. Now if you click on extensions, we have a few packages pre-installed from the Anaconda installation, and that's Anaconda extension pack, Python, and YAML. I went ahead and searched Python and added Python for VS Code as an extension as well so that I could make sure I had everything necessary to give you a quick demo of this, of this development environment. So you can go ahead and search Python on your own, click the install button here and read up on it if you so choose. Now, if you wanted to create a new project, you'd first need to set a folder. So I went ahead and already set a folder and it's Python video. So you go new and you should have an option for new folder, but I already did that, so I don't have that option. What I wanna do is add a new file inside of that folder. So we can go ahead and click the additional file button, new file. And I'm going to name it hello world.py just for testing purposes. 
And then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and start typing. You'll notice that it gives me some Intelli IntelliSense uh, prompts to predetermine what I wanna type. So print, it already came up with a print statement. We can go ahead and run that, but first, let's go to the bottom left-hand corner and switch our terminal to Anaconda, not Python. This is something I ran into when I was um, practicing this. So we can go ahead and highlight our text. We can run it in terminal, and as you can see here, we have the hello world statement printing out in our terminal. Now let's see what else we can do. So let's go ahead and do the same thing we did in the static terminal. We do an x equals 1, and then let's print an x plus x, which should give us 2. So let's go ahead and run this in terminal as well. And we have a hello world printed out and a 2 printed out. So it works just the same. I will continue playing around with this environment. This is new to me. I really like how it looks. I do like IntelliSense. Microsoft gets a bad rep, but um, this seems to be pretty interesting and could hold some promise. I'm still much more comfortable in Jupyter, and I find a lot of value in Jupyter, so I'm going to continue using that for now. The last fun thing I want to cover here in Visual Studio Code is you can change in the bottom left-hand corner the template and color palettes based on your preference. I think it's a neat, cool little feature. Um, so you can play around with this if you prefer to code in a red environment, a dark environment, or blue environment. Nice little touch. It gets, um, gets distracting sometimes typing in the bright white of the Jupyter Notebook. So thank you guys. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more content. Thank you.